In this presentation, I want to show you how you can fit a linear growth model in M+. So first of all, what is a linear growth model or linear growth curve model, as we sometimes say? In a linear growth curve model, we look at an observed variable yt as a function of so-called growth factors and measurement error. So in this equation here you can see on the left hand side yt is a repeatedly measured observed variable like for example intelligence scores or personality scores, depression scores and so on. And then on the right hand side you have xi1 which is the intercept factor that indicates the true scores at the onset. And then you have on the right hand side xi2 minus xi1 which is a difference factor that represents change over time and in this case the assumption is that the change is linear so we have as a an effect t minus 1 t is the time point and so the slope factor xi2 minus xi1 um, has a linear effect across Time. In addition, we have epsilon t at the end, which uh, represents error, measurement error, and deviations from the linear growth function, as well as time-specific effects such as situation effects or something like that. Now, if you find this equation to be a little difficult to wrap your mind around, then it's easier to maybe take a look at a path diagram. So what would this look like for four measurement occasions that are equally spaced in time. So here we have y1, so this would be the measured variable, for example, IQ scores at time one, and then we repeatedly observe the same variable y um, on four equally spaced measurement occasions. So here we have y2 and then y3 and y4. Again, the same variable, but measured again. So in this model, the idea is that all of these variables load onto the intercept factor xi1 with a loading of one. So these loadings are fixed to one because this equation here does not have a factor loading that is estimated. So they're implicitly fixed to one. And so you have to take that into account when you specify this model as a model of confirmatory factor analysis, for example, in M plus. In addition, the variables also load onto the slope factor and those loadings are also fixed because they are um, a function of t minus one. So the slope factor is the second factor. The first variable doesn't load onto the slope factor because um, 1 minus 1 is 0. So the loading here is implicitly 0, which makes this the starting point. And then the second variable has a loading fixed at 1 on the slope factor. The third variable has a loading fixed at 2 on the slope factor. And the fourth variable has a loading of three on this slope factor. And that makes this a linear slope factor because the effect of this factor, so say, is one at the second measurement occasion, but then it's double at the third measurement occasion and triple at the fourth measurement occasion. And that, so say, implies that the latent trajectories, the true scores change linearly across time. These two factors are allowed to correlate, so we estimate a covariance between these factors typically when we apply this model, and so that indicates whether there's a correlation between the initial trade value at time one and change. For example, it might be the case that individuals who are already higher on IQ at time one increase more, they change more or grow more because they already have a higher intelligence at time one, or it could be that they don't change as much because they're already at the ceiling with their intelligence. And so depending on what you find there or what the case is in your data, there might be a positive correlation between the intercept and the slope or a negative correlation between the intercept and the slope, or there might be a zero correlation between intercept and slope if the initial status is not related to changes over time. And that's an interesting parameter to look at. Now, in addition, what else do we estimate? for these growth factors, we estimate the mean at time one. So this is a latent mean structure model where we estimate the latent mean of the growth factors. And so we estimate the mean of the intercept factor, which gives you the average starting point. We also estimate the variance of the intercept factor, which is a measure of individual differences at the onset. And we do the same for the slope factor. We estimate its mean and its variance. The mean of the slope factor indicates what the average rate of change is. So that gives you the slope. 
the average slope, so to say, of the average growth curve. And you also get a variance for the slope factor, which tells you how much people differed in terms of how much they changed. Some people may not change at all, so they have a slope factor score of zero. Some people might increase in their or have increases in their IQ scores, in that case they would have a positive slope score. Some others might have a decline in their intelligence score, so then they would have a negative slope factor score. And so that shows you there can be variability in the slope scores, and that's reflected in the fact that we estimate a variance for that slope factor as well. What else do we estimate in this model? We estimate measurement error variances, so the variances of epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, and epsilon 4. Those variances can be left free to vary across time, or they can be constrained to be time invariant, depending on what you like or what the case is in your data. And so those variances represent unreliability and also deviations from the linear growth curve and or situation-specific effects that um, might be present in addition to a trait effect. So that's what a linear growth model looks like for four equally spaced time points. And now let's take a look at how this same model, this exact model, is applied in M+. M+, plus has a very a simple syntax for growth curve models, which is very useful because you can specify a growth curve model literally with just one line of code. And so that's shown here. For this linear growth curve model, you can see that here I'm assuming we have IQ data and we want to see are there changes in IQ scores across time? Do IQ scores change linearly across time? What was the average change there? What was the variability in change? And so on. I have four variables, y1 through y4, exactly as on the slide. And so now in the model statement in M+, plus, we specify the growth factors here on the left-hand side. I call the intercept factor xi1. You could also just call it i or int or something like that. And then I call the slope factor xi21 to be in line with the notation on the slides. Then you put this uh, um, vertical bar here and you list your observed variables with loadings that's, that correspond to a linear growth for equal spacing of time. So the first variable has a loading of zero on the slope factor, the second variable has a loading of one on the slope factor, and then the third variable has a loading of two, and so on. So that implies linear growth. Now if you don't want linear growth, you can also leave the third loading here free. So you could put a little star there to indicate that that loading should be freely estimated. And you could do the same thing for y4 also and just estimate that loading freely. Then your slope factor is no longer a linear slope factor, but then so say you estimate the form of change from the data in an exploratory kind of fashion and that can also be done. You can also add a quadratic growth factor by just simply listing another label here on the left hand side of that bar symbol and then M plus will then fit a quadratic growth curve model to the data. I requested the descriptive statistics and the standardized solution so we can also look at the correlation between the growth factors and so we can also look at the R squared values for the observed variables to look at how reliable they were as indicators of the growth process. The plot option can be used to indicate the growth curve so that allows you to plot the individual curves and also the average curves both observed and model implied. It's very useful to check out what the actual observed growth curves look like and to compare them to the model implied growth curves of, for example, a linear growth curve model. Now I can't show you this here in this um, example because I have the Mac version here of M plus and so that doesn't allow me to generate this plot but if you're using Windows then this plot option will give you those plots of the growth curves and that's really really useful. So let's check out the M plus output for this model. We have a sample of 300 here and the fit of this model looks really good, which is not always the case because a linear growth curve model is fairly restrictive. It assumes that change is linear for everybody in your sample or in your population and so that's a very restrictive assumption. But in this case, the model fits well because I simulated the data. So I simulated them from a linear growth curve model and then there's no surprise that it will fit. What do we get in terms of parameter estimates? You can see all the loadings here are fixed. So 
those are not interesting. Next, the only or the first free parameter that we get in this output is the covariance between intercept and slope. So that is the estimated covariance here. And you can see it's negative and it's statistically significant, as you can see here from the last column where you find the two-tailed p-value. So this means there's a negative correlation between intercept and slope that is significant. We'll later take a look at the standardized solution where you can see what that means and how strong that correlation actually is. Now, what else can we see? We find the mean of the intercept factor. So that was the average IQ value in terms of a true score, in terms of a latent score at time one. So on average, individuals started out with an IQ score of 100. And then the slope factor has also a mean that is estimated, and that was estimated to be about 1.5. So what does this mean? This means that per unit of time, there was on average an increase of 1.5 IQ points. So we see there was here again, so to say, in the sample on average, maybe that was a sample of children where their IQ scores are still increasing as a function of development and so per unit of time the IQ scores on average increased by 1.5 IQ points and that was a significant increase. You can see that the mean of the slope factor was also statistically significant so there was a significant average growth process or a significant increase here in these data. You can see that the intercepts of the observed variables, which would normally be estimated by M plus for a regular confirmatory factor model, are all fixed to one automatically because M plus knows that a linear growth curve model does not have intercepts for the observed variables because the mean structure is represented by the intercept factor and by the growth factor. And so it wouldn't be useful to estimate intercepts for the observed variables. Also, that doesn't make sense. So those are automatically fixed to zero when in M plus you use the special syntax for a growth curve model. Next are the variances for the intercept factor and the slope factor. The variance for the intercept factor uh, shows the extent of individual differences at time one. So there were individual differences in IQ scores at time one. And then also there were individual differences in the slopes, which means not everybody changed exactly by 1.5 points. Some growth curves were steeper than others. So some people increased more others did not increase so much. And so this 10.158 variance for the slope reflects those individual differences in growth over time. And oftentimes one goal of growth curve analyses is to find determinants of individual differences in change. Why did some people's IQ scores change more than others? Are there any predictors that um, can explain that. So you could add covariates to the model to explain individual differences in the intercept and or in the slope. And then finally are the residual variances for the observed variables. So those are the variances of epsilon. They reflect measurement error. They reflect deviations from the linear growth pattern. And they also reflect potential situation specific effects that are not um, otherwise represented here in this model. In the standardized solution, we typically don't look at the standardized factor loadings because the factors are correlated. And so therefore, these, um, there's no easy interpretation to these standardized factor loadings. They cannot be interpreted as correlations between the variable and the growth factors because the factors are correlated and because the variables load onto multiple factors. The only exception would be Y1, which only loads on this intercept factor. So the 0.901 here for Y1 does have a clear interpretation because that variable does not have a secondary loading. And so this means that the correlation between Y1 and the intercept factor was about 0.9. And that indicates this variable was very reliable. And 0.9 squared then gives you the reliability or R squared for that variable. So it shows you why one was a reliable indicator of the intercept factor. You can't interpret the other loadings in this way because these other variables have loadings on both the intercept factor and the slope factor, and those are allowed to correlate. So then these standardized loadings here are not correlations. They are partial standardized regression coefficients, and they don't have a very straightforward interpretation, which is why we typically don't really look at those so much for a growth model where the growth factors are correlated.
Now here you can see that the correlation between the intercept and slope factor was estimated to be negative 0.22, so um, modest correlation between intercept and slope, and it was negative, which indicates that individuals with higher initial IQ scores showed less growth than individuals who initially had lower IQ scores. So that could be a ceiling effect, right? So individuals who already have high IQ scores at time one may not be able to increase much more because they're already at the ceiling. Whereas individuals who are lower with their IQ scores at time one, they have more room to grow. And so that's what we often then see is a negative correlation between intercept and slope factor due to a ceiling effect or a floor effect. And so that's typical, but it doesn't have to be the case. You sometimes also find that there's no correlation or you find that sometimes there's a positive correlation. So that could definitely also be the case. The advantage here is that this correlation is between latent variables. You don't have this issue of um, change score, so say that is between observed variables where you have a lot of measurement error in the change score. So the correlation with observed change scores is often not so meaningful. But with latent um, growth factors here, you can clearly interpret that correlation and it does make sense and could be positive, negative, or zero. And then finally, we get the R squared estimates for the observed variables, and those can be interpreted like reliabilities, assuming that there are no other effects that we omitted here. So if we assume that really this is just a process of trade and trade change over time and otherwise measurement error, then those could be interpreted as reliabilities. And here you can see that they are very reliable indicators of this growth process with reliabilities ranging between 0.81 and 0.908. So between 81% and 91% of the observed variance is accounted for by intercept and slope. And the rest is error, this is measurement error. So it's a relatively um, low amount of error. If you find that these R square values are low, so let's say if they're only 0.5-ish or something like that, then it could mean that you're omitting situation-specific effects. So meaning that your measures are not just measures of growth factors, but also there is some situation-specific variance that in this model is confounded with measurement error. I hope you found this presentation useful to show how growth curve models are specified in uh, M plus and how the results are interpreted. Um, if you found this useful, then please consider subscribing to my channel and stay tuned for more stats tutorials on this channel. I'll see you next time.